Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today I'm going to show you the inside of a condenser and a sea chest. So first off, this big column running down into the triple bottom is a sea chest. The sea chest is where cold seawater is scooped up into the condenser. We'll talk more about why in a minute. But uh, that is a huge opening in the bottom of the ship. It's one of several hundred openings in the bottom of an Iowa-class battleship that allows seawater in for various functions, whether that's to be uh, inducted into the fire and flushing system, or whether it's to go into the evaporator to be turned into drinking water, or whether it's cooling water like this condenser needs. Come on inside with me after this word from our sponsors. So, here we are inside one of the main condensers. Each of the turbine units has one. That's what we're in. So there's, there's four uh, main engines. This happens to be the one that's in engine room number three. And we came here in particular because we've had leaks in this one in the past, so we inspect it pretty frequently. This is the only uh, seawater leak that we've ever found on the ship in the 20 years that she's been in service. And I'll tell you how we dealt with that in a minute, but it's one of the reasons why the ship needs to go into dry dock. There are additional condensers on the ship for things like turbo generators, um, but this is the biggest one. It's the easiest one for me to climb into. So yeah, you looking up here, that's uh, maybe over eight feet tall on the inside. So, um, the steam from the boilers goes into the turbines, it spins the turbine blades, creates work, and it's got no uh, working pressure left. It's a zero PSI. It's still 850 degrees steam though, so you can't just pump it back into the boiler. So uh, the condensers are pulling a vacuum that sucks the steam down into it, the dead steam. And then this opening down here would just be wide open to the ocean. If we're doing less than eight knots, we would have a pump running, a steam-powered pump that's sucking water in, or if we're doing an initial light off, it might be an electrical auxiliary pump sucking the water in. If we're going above eight knots, then the water is automatically being scooped in here uh, where I am now standing. From here, the water goes into these tubes and that is just a heat exchanger so that those tubes, uh, the steam is on the outside of the tubes, the seawater is on the inside of the tubes. So the steam is going to become cool, fresh water that can then be pumped back into the boilers, boiler feed water. And the seawater, which is now significantly hotter, goes in the tubes one end, comes out the other end, and goes down another sea chest back into the ocean. So, uh, what are some other things we're looking at in here? You notice how some of these tubes have plugs in them, including the entire upper, upper uh, run there. These tubes uh, are corroded out, which means that seawater had wasted a hole in them and was leaking into the boiler feed water. So they had to shut down the whole plant, uh, track down these corroded tubes, and then plug them rather than taking the whole thing apart and replacing them. This is probably done at the end of the ship's career um, when they decided it was too expensive to fix because she was only going to be in service for X amount longer. I notice we've got a rod up here. The reason why we've got this whole manhole and this room for me to be in here is so that you can periodically come in and punch these tubes and clean them out. Um, usually you pick the smallest guy in the room, not somebody who's one curator thick like I am. Uh, but that's the whole reason why there's a manhole to get in here, uh, like this one back here in the corner. So, let's talk about what happened here. These have valves on them, the sea chests. So you close the valve when the plant is not running, and you open the valve when it is running. Um, when the ship is in mothballs, they would weld this over. The problem is that the blank that they're welding on there is slightly dissimilar from the metal of the rest of the ship, 
which is slightly dissimilar from the metal of this uh, big cast tank that we're in, uh, which means that there is accelerated corrosion. To deal with that, they have room for zinc anodes. Look at how corroded those zincs are. So at some point, the weld bead, which is dissimilar from the new plate that's welded on, which is dissimilar from the ship's hull, which is dissimilar from this tank, uh, had some sort of galvanic action going on and corroded and failed. So we found water in the bilges down here. This, this is many, many years ago. Uh, so initially, what they tried to do was fill this uh, with this caulk that you might be able to see around the edge. And that didn't work. So the next thing they tried to do was shore it in place with timber, shore a plug-in, uh, which is what you see back here. And while that sort of worked, it wasn't great because it is, a, uh, it is under a lot of pressure. That is a damage control technique that is not a repair. So um, working with some marine salvage guys, we figured out that if we put a hose in here leading up, that will equalize the pressure uh, because the water level inside the ship can't be higher than the water level outside of the ship. So any water trying to leak in comes into the hose, goes up to roughly the ship's water line, and then it's at the same pressure and level as the outside water. It thinks that the space is flooded, and uh, as much as water can think, and it stops coming into the inside of the ship. Uh, so that is our short-term solution until we go into dry dock and we not only uh, re-weld this blank, but, all, but inspect all of the other blanks around the ship. One other interesting thing we found out in here, I've got my uh, magnetic light here, this, um, we've, we've always been told that these sorts of tanks are manganese bronze. Well, the ones under the turbo generators are definitely a bronze color, but uh, these are kind of a silver color, and look at this. The magnet attaches to it. So this is some sort of ferrous metal, uh, metal alloy, which is to say it can corrode. Uh, so I expect that the uh, bronze tanks, this was either too big to make out of the manganese bronze, too big to cast like that, or uh, for some other reason that would have been too much of a precious resource, or something like that, they decide to make this tank out of something different. Uh, and I'm going to have to do some research to figure out what that material was. What's a space you'd like to see me climb into next? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching. This is how battleship curators are born. We just spring out of our ships fully formed. Oh. Thanks for watching.